guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter brainwashing session, and in this one, I'm going to be advocating for why we should stop using so many math nodes inside our shader node network, and instead we can substitute all these math nodes for a single script node, which is much more efficient, much more elegant, and it actually gives us much more control once we learn how to use this. So, for this example, we only have one, two, three, four math nodes, but in a very complex shader, uh, you know, something like 90% of your network is going to be math nodes. So instead of having all of these just to write a simple function, it's nice to kind of script it out like this. In this case, I've taken my texture coordinates for this example, separated them into its x and y components, and then um, I have an exponent right now set to 2. So this is red x squared and then y squared goes to the power of 2 and then we add them so x squared plus y squared and then we round it you know only four math nodes but quite a few for something as simple as making a circle and the nice thing about this node network is i've made it so that you can control the exponent so something like four gives us a rounded rectangle something like six you know, makes the corners even sharper, and we can just put it in the, uh, bigger and bigger even numbers. And if we choose odd numbers, strangely enough, we kind of get, you know, strange uh, shapes. But, um, yeah, that this is the node network I've chosen to, you know, kind of show. But um, alternatively to this, we could equally use, again, texture coordinates separated. But now instead of math nodes, we have a script node. We could equivalently use something like this which gives the same calculation but looks a lot nicer and it's controlled by again this is a script node it's controlled by a script that i wrote and i know that this probably looks a bit complicated for people who've never coded before but i'll make sure to explain it to the best of my ability so you can see that all the math actually happens on a single line which is much much cleaner and lets us edit this much much faster than uh, the math nodes over here and by the way, if, in case you were curious about the rounding at the end, basically these math nodes just calculate the radius. So without it, it just kind of looks like this, where the center is black, because the radius is zero, meaning it's, you know, very small. And then as we go away, as we propagate away from the center, and the radius increases, it goes to white radially. So that's why we round it at the end. Anyways, um, in this tutorial, now that I've kind of, you know, properly introduced this, I will teach you how to use the script node, and we will say goodbye to math nodes forever, never going back. Okay, so let's start up a new file. Okay, so this is what your blender scene should look like by default, and to prepare everything for the script node, what we're going to do is I'm going to use a plane to demonstrate our material, and in the render tab, make sure that you change from EV to cycles. This is critical because we're going to be using something called open shading language. That's the um, kind of the language that I wrote the script in from before. It's kind of like C++, but we need this, and it's not in EV. It's not compatible. So cycles and um, GPU also doesn't work. That's another thing to know. It's only CPU compatible. But um, I can, I, I mean, I'm sure that a lot of people are already mad about this, but um, if you're making a complicated shader anyways, you're probably not using EV. But it does suck that uh, you have to use CPU. So make sure you enable this, and then we're going to go to the shading workspace, which is where we're going to be doing all our work. And I'm just going to create a simple material, which I'm going to call something creative. You know, it could be whatever I want, like whatever I want. Genius move. And I'm going to set this up just like it was before. So texture coordinates separated into its x, y, z components. And instead of using a bunch of math nodes, what we're going to be using is, again, we're going to be using a fancy node called the script node, which actually has its own section. And this has to be the most underrated node if all, of all of Blender, but that's just because people don't know how to use it. So you can see that the script node has a single input, and that is where we load in our script, which doesn't have any options right now because, you know, we didn't make any scripts. You can also import one externally that you wrote, like in a uh, text file outside, you know, somewhere on your hard drive. But we're going to be using internal, and we're going to open up the 
text editor, which is something that, again, most people probably aren't used to using at all. But this is where we write all our scripts. And we're just going to create a new script like we would create a new material over here. But a new script, which I'm going to call something creative like <laughs> whatever I want. And you can see that now that we've created a script inside our blend file, which I should save, by the way. Um, let me save it. You can see that now inside our options, we can actually choose the script. And if we try to compile the code, which is what this button does, it kind of loads everything we write in here into this node. If we compile it, you see that we're actually getting an OSL, Open Shading Language Script Compilation Error. And that's because it's reading this text file, which actually doesn't have any code. So obviously, obviously it's going to spit out an error, you know, when there's no instructions to execute. So now pretty much the rest of this tutorial is how do I write code here to modify this node to give us inputs and outputs and do calculation in between. So just follow along. In the beginning it might be a bit confusing, but I'll do my best. So first of all, we are going to define a shader. A shader, which we can name anything. You could give this thing any name. It could be Frog, it could be Alice, it could be Alicia, but I'm going to pick whatever I want. So right now we've created a shader called whatever I want, and we're going to give this no parameters for now and no instructions. So let me just space this out a bit to clean and organize. Basically the way you want to read this is we have a shader called whatever I want. That's the name. Inside these parentheses is where we put our parameters. That's the inputs and the outputs, which right now there are none. And then inside our brackets or curly braces or whatever they're called, this is where we put our instructions from our uh, using our parameters. And right now we don't have any instructions, but we can take this code and compile it. And you can see that now we have OSL shader compilation succeeded. So now it uh, basically just defined a shader with a name and that's it, but it's not doing anything to our node. The first thing we want to do is add some inputs to our node so we can start connecting our X coordinate and our Y coordinate. And then we can, inside the instructions, do all our math in a single line. So for the inputs, you can input in a bunch of stuff. You could input in, you can input in text, which is strings. You could input in numbers in the form of integers, um, floats, whatever. So you could type something in like int um, to bring in an int, or maybe it's integer, I forget, or a double. But we're going to use float, which for our purposes just means number. Don't worry about what it means specifically. So we're going to be importing in a number called input1. You can name this whatever you want, really. Um, kind of like this, you could give it an arbitrary name, as long as you keep using the name in the future. So our first input is going to be called input1, and we're going to give it a default value, you know, a value unless we say otherwise of zero. So here we go, let's run the script. And you can see already it's added a input socket into our node that we could just connect stuff into. But if we don't connect anything by default, it's a zero. And again, it's called input one. So already uh, pretty cool stuff. If we wanna add another input, what do you think we do? Well, we add a comma to go to the next item on our list. And we're gonna type in again float because we wanna import in another number. And we're going to call this one something different, like input2. Very creative. And uh, we could give it a different default value because it doesn't really matter. We're just going to be using our x and y components anyways. So I'm going to give it something like 1 and refresh. So now you can see we have two inputs and a default value for this one is 1. And we now need to have an output before we do our calculation. So comma and then another thing. In our, inside our parameters, so outputs and inputs are inside these parentheses. And for this one, we want it to be a float. Again, we want to output a number, so we input two numbers, do a bunch of math, and then, you know, whatever the result is, we output it. But before you type in float, you need to specify this as an output. So just type in output and then float, so we want to output a number. And then we could just, again, call this absolutely whatever. So I'm just going to call this, um, like, calc for calculation. So we're going to use input 1 and input 2 to calculate our output called 
calc and we could just give this a default value like a one and let's refresh this so now we have two inputs and an output and if we take this and connect it to the surface you can see that it turns white because by default it's set to one right if this was set to zero then it'd be black when we plug this in and note that it doesn't really matter what our inputs are right now because we're not doing any calculation with them okay so the next step is um, using our inputs to do some math to get our um, calculation right that's the whole point so for example we could do something very simple like calculation which is our output is equal to input one plus input two and then put a semicolon like you would in C++. That's how you say you're done with this line. And let's just refresh this again. Um, nothing happens unless you refresh it. And you can see that already we're getting something cool. Again, we're taking our input, our second input, and then just adding them. And you could use anything for this. So you could uh, put in a number to get a gradient, or you could do it the other way around. But I'm going to use both x and y. And by the way, again, we're just adding these. By the way, we could just um, add a single math node, set to add, uh, use our x, use our y. And when we visualize this, it's going to give us exactly the same thing because basically this addition is exactly what's going on in here. So already with our script node, we've replaced a single math node, which is cool. But kind of the whole point of this is to do a bunch of math nodes in bulk. So for example, let's go to the original um, example of, I'm just going to put it in here quickly, of this x squared. So x to the power of 2. And then we also want y to the power of 2. So this is the math node version. Then we added them together. And then we just rounded off the result, remember, just to get some nice of, or kind of to get rid of the fall off. And then we also clamped it. So the question is kind of like, how do we take these instructions and put them in here? So um, instead of just adding, first of all, we take our first input, which is x, and then square it. So that's just something like input 1 times input 1. Again, input 1 is the name of our first uh, socket. Even though it's x, it's kind of arbitrary, right? We just care about the name here. And then we add input 2 times input 2. And by the way, this is equivalent to squaring it, right? x squared is the same as x times x, right? And then for now, we're going to kind of forget about rounding and just put a semicolon. So already in this very, very simple line of code, we have one math node for squaring, a second math node for squaring, and a third math node for addition. So kind of like everything up to here is already just contained in a single line of code. And if we refresh this, you can see now we're getting the radius like we had before, right? Same thing. So super easy, super quick. So now how do we take this and, you know, at our rounding. Well, it's pretty simple. You could either just put all this in parentheses as if it was one quantity, and then just take it and just type in round. It really is that simple. So we could either do that, and let's just see what that looks like. There we go. So that's what rounding looks like. Uh, we can turn off clamp and see what it looks like here. It should be the same. By the way, you can see these um, you can see these are rings because uh, we're not clamping it, which means that it's rounding to the nearest integer. So here it's 0, here it's 1, here it's 2, 3, etc. And uh, since we're using filmic color space, we can see all that. If we use something like standard, it would hide all, all that information because it kind of like visually clamps everything above 1. But um, again, to solve this, what you need to do is clamp. But before we get to that, you can, again, you can either do the rounding here, or if you want to be a bit cleaner with your code, what you can do is first uh, calculate this, and then we could say calc, which is our output, is equal to the rounded version of calc. And make sure to put a semicolon. So basically here, instead of writing all our instructions on one line, we're saying first get the radius, and then take this calc from here, round it, and assign it back here. And again, uh, don't be confused by the fact that we're saying calc is equal to rounded version of calc, right? This is an equality 
this is a assignment, right? So we're saying take this, calculate it, and then send it here, which is why it works. And let's just refresh this. And you can see it does the exact same thing. We're, however, going to uh, just do it on one line just to show how powerful uh, the script node is. Okay, so let's refresh this. So now we've done this, and um, before we do our clamping, let's clean this up a bit too. So instead of input 1 times input 1, we could just say power of 2, right? We're not using like a multiply here and putting an x times x, right? We're, we're using power because it's cleaner. And of course, you could do that here. So you could use something like power of, and here you need to put in uh, two parameters because you need to have a base and an exponent, right? Same way that you have two inputs here, a base and an exponent. So our base is input 1 to the power of 2. And then we just do the same thing here. So power of input 2 which in this case is y to the power of 2. Let's just save and compile. And you can see it gives us the exact same thing. But notice that this way, instead of uh, multiplying, it's you know using the power function, which means that instead of 2, we could just put in an arbitrary exponent, right? So we don't have to pick a number, but we can have this be an arbitrary exponent. And right now, if we try to compile this, it's going to give us an error. You see, this gives us an error because uh, this exp, this uh, exponent, isn't defined yet, but I can also make this an input. So I could just, you know, say float. So another input, that's a number called exp, which by default is going to be set to 2. So I can just add that in and refresh. And now our node has this exponent uh, parameter, which uh, because we didn't define it to be any number in particular, we can always just uh, change. So here's uh, 4, uh, 6, 12, 100. And you can see that uh, we have a bunch of control, right, just with a single slider. Because we didn't say multiply, and multiply we used powers instead. Okay, so already we have a bunch of control. Finally, how do we do our clamping? Well, I don't think there's a clamp function that I know about, although maybe it's just called something that I'm not familiar with. So instead, what I'm going to do is something that's pretty much equivalent, and that is I'm going to take the minimum of, and the minimum is another thing that takes two inputs. So the minimum of um, basically everything here, right, everything we calculated, and then also the number one. So it's going to take the minimum of this and one, which means that if at any point this is larger than 1, it's just going to choose 1 because it's choosing the smaller of these two numbers. So it's kind of like clamping for everything above 1, which um, kind of does the job, I'm pretty sure. So it's a refresh. There you go. You can see that that does exactly what we wanted to. So already one script node replacing uh, four math nodes, and in some sense we can uh, modify this a lot more easily and get more. Uh, control out of this uh, very quickly and um, if you kind of like like your scripts you could also like save them or send them and that means that uh, you could actually build a library of script notes uh, which means you're not going to need to just kind of put these in over and over and over and over again and another example of something that uh, might be useful just a quick uh, thing to finish with is that um, a lot of people are infuriated to furious uh, with the fact that the add node and multiply um, only has two inputs, right? So if you wanted to add three quantities like x, y, and z, what you'd have to do is add x and y and then take that and add it to z, right? There's no, there's not a three inputs, which means you have to use two nodes. But with a script node, uh, this can be done very easily. So let's get rid of our exponent, for example. And let's get rid of all of this. And let's have our calculation be, by the way, we need one more input, because now we said we want three. So input three, we'll have it be zero by default. Let's have this be zero by default, too. If we wanted to take a sum of three inputs, how would we do that? Well, it's just as easy as input one plus input two plus input three. And by the way, I don't think it matters if you don't put a space after, you know, between the two and the plus. And you can see now we have three inputs, and we can add all of them at the same time. Now, 
of course, this is only relevant for three-dimensional objects that have, you know, a Z component. But you can see now we have this kind of 3D cross-section going on here, uh, which is very cool. And you could just keep adding more inputs to this, right? So this is a way to make a custom node um, that lets you sum up a bunch of stuff. And we could say plus input four. And even though there's no like four dimensional objects, there's no reason that you can't take three inputs and then for the fourth one, just choose a number yourself to kind of get a sweeping cross section. But uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, hopefully I've made a good argument and a good tutorial for, you know, why we should get rid of uh, math nodes. And I kind of do it like uh, in the script node. I guess the one downside again is that you have to use CPU, which is much slower than GPU rendering, and it's not compatible with EV uh, for now at least. But um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot. And um, if you enjoyed and want to support more tutorials like these, more very strange ASMR tutorials, I have no idea what's going on here, but uh, if you like this channel and have the means to donate or just want to and want to get the benefits over at Patreon, uh, there is a link in the description. I appreciate everybody uh, who wants to do that. Um, thank you. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this free tutorial. Otherwise, you know, 